I'd like to uh, <clears throat> teach on prophecy is that when you <clears throat> study the Bible in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament, parts of it, and you read all about the different things that was prophesied and has already come true. Now, I want everybody to catch that. Things that were prophesied years in the future, we're down the line here, we're way down the line, and we can look back and we can see all the things that have been prophesied and it's come out just like the Bible says. Now, with that in mind, <clears throat> when you look at future prophecies, I don't think we have any room to doubt. Would you agree to that? Yes. That's simple, not complicated. And so our faith should be energized to know that what is the next thing on the prophetic uh, picture ahead? And so that's what we are covering. Now I want us to look at the black, black, blackboard here. I don't know, I hope you can see it, but one thing you have to realize when you begin to study the scriptures and the New Testament, they were, they seen it, uh, the timeline, notice the Old Te uh, Testament timeline, what the prophets saw. And they saw a timeline all the way back here to Adam, all the way up here to eternity. But they didn't see the 2,000 years of a church age. Now, when you, when you read the New Testament, you'll see uh, John the Baptist came on the scene. And what did he say? Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. So he's preaching the kingdom here, the 1,000 years kingdom. See, So if we take this... 2,000 years of grace of the church age and just remove it out of the way and then we'd push all this closer to the cross. How many can see that? You see that? Okay, that's very important. When um, the children of Israel came out of Egypt, they said probably it could take about 11 days and they would be at the River Jordan where they could cross the River Jordan and take the land. But how many of you know they didn't do it? So God had to stretch the time, didn't he? And how long did he stretch it? Forty years. So that generation had to die out in those 40 years, and the next generation came around, and then they came back to the Jordan River and that generation, under the, under the leadership of Joshua, crossed the Jordan and went in and began to capture the, the um, land that was promised to Abraham. You see that picture? All right, so we see the same thing today. So when you read the Bible, you have to uh, understand that, okay? Now, you could take one verse of Scripture in the Bible... And in that one verse of Scripture, half of it might be speaking of the now. And before the last part of that Scripture to be fulfilled, you may go a thousand years. Or from one verse to another, you may go 70 years or a thousand years. How many understand that? I mean, I could show you the scriptures if you need to see that. I only have 45 minutes. <laughs> but I, the reason I say that, you, if, you, if you hadn't seen that, it's worth you to understand that because it's going to help you interpret the scriptures. Make sure you understand that. Uh, let's turn to a scripture just in case. And I know we're not going to get very far, but I'll do the best I can. There's so much material that I have and so much to share. But I want to sh make sure you understand certain things. Let's go to Acts. Let's go to, you're familiar with this, Isaiah 9, 6. Okay, turn to Isaiah 9, 6 in the Old Testament. <coughs> Excuse me. That's back to, that's back, okay. Isaiah. Uh, we'll find it directly. Isaiah, okay, I'm in Isaiah. He put that on the board. Okay, well, he's got it on the board. Everybody, can everybody see that? Is the board, is this in the way? Is this in the way? How's that? Everybody can see it? 
Okay, look at the board. Now, this was, now when was this? When was this? When Isaiah was way back here, uh, probably right in this area right here somewhere, before the cross, okay? So, we, 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 this chart that you have, I've given everybody a, a, that chart, by the way. I guess you, you have it. But look, for, for to us a child is born. Now, Isaiah is talking primarily to us, which is basically the Jews at that time. Of course, it means us too. But at the time, we're not counted in that, but we know we're in that because we're the seed of Abraham. You understand that? So you're, that's why we have the New Testament that tells us things. But when that was uh, written down, basically it was just the Jews. The church wasn't even in existence, okay? But we have the New Testament, and we know that we've been grafted in. Everybody understand that? Okay, I'm going slow. To us, a son is given. Well, there's John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's a promise. And now look what it says. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Now, wait a minute. The government shall be upon a little child? How many can see that from the time that Christ was born and a child was given and the government will be upon his shoulder goes all the way back. Here we have right here before the cross, 30 years before the cross, Jesus was born roughly. Do you see that? All right, so we'll go boom all the way, not on this time, well, on this time area, the kingdom. And we'll go back to our time area, uh, the government, the kingdom will be upon his shoulder. Not as a baby, but as the, the, the second coming of Christ. All right, you got that? I'm going slow because you need to get it. Now look at it again. So now I'm going to ask you a question. Now that's in the same paragraph or the same sentence. For to us a child is born, but at that time, the child wasn't born when Isaiah was speaking it. So how far in the future was the child born? So you look at this. Uh, there's David here, Solomon. Saul, David, and Solomon, and then the uh, different kings and all of that. There's Babylon there. And so when the child, was, the child was born right there, and that's when that happened. So Isaiah is looking and, and prophesying what's going to be in the future. Now I've got to ask you a question. Has that come to pass? Yes. So you can check that off. I mean, there are so many, and I've got hundreds of them written down, of, of the fulfillment of, that Jesus fulfilled all of these prophecies that was prophesied about him. Now, most people have some wisdom. <laughs> they got a brain. <laughs> and it don't take much to figure that out. That there must be something to this Christianity. There must be something to the Bible. Hundreds of prophecies and they've all come to pass, and yet there's still more prophecies. Hmm, this thing must be truth. This thing must be real. See, see we got to nail that in our brain. Watch this. Yeah, right, right, right. right through your ears right here. <laughs> I got a little sense of humor. You'll, you'll see. <laughs> all right, where are we at? Okay, now, time, time, time. The government shall be upon his shoulder. When he was born? When? Somebody tell me. Way here. Now, yeah, at, yeah, right, yeah, right. No, that's the rapture. No, eternity. Wait a minute, where am I at? Okay, the kingdom. I'm sorry, the kingdom. Right here at the kingdom, that's eternity. The new heaven and the new earth. This is the thousand years. So you see that when you, in one scripture, you've got... 
when you study scriptures now, you got to understand that. Okay? All through the Word of God, you've got to understand that principle. Now, <clears throat> it shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father of Eternity, Prince of Peace. Okay? So now what do we have in the future? The kingdom of God. Today we can say, repent, for the kingdom of God is near. Well, John the Baptist was saying that way back here, just before the cross, just before Jesus started his ministry. He said, the kingdom is near. And it was pretty near, wasn't it? But look at our timeline. What happened? Well, you got to know what happened. The Jews failed God. They would not carry the gospel. They rebelled against Christ. They wouldn't believe that he was the Messiah. Now, a lot of them, the leadership, basically, many people in that day did believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. They believed that he was the Savior of the world. And, of course, they are in heaven now. And those folks that didn't believe, they are in hell. Wasn't God's will, for it's not God's will that any man perish, but that all should come to repentance. But man has a will. I want to think about it. Two young people together, they know each other. You know, back in the old days, the father and mother picked the man or the woman for them to marry. How many know that? You know, how many would like that? <laughs> you want to choose because you have feelings, you have emotions. God has made you an individual person where you can choose. But see, there's a responsibility that comes with that power of choice. We choose the right person. Susan, we've been married 61 years, my wife and me. I must have picked the right person. She must have picked the right man. Do you know what she said before she married me? She said, Lord, if this is not the man for me, <coughs> cut him out of my life. Well, you know, <laughs> I mean, not, not physically, but cut him out of my life. Now, that's a brave thing. But it was no doubt in my mind, but I was willing to marry her regardless of what, because I wasn't a Christian at the time. So it must have been God's will because we're happy today. I can't get on that. I get happy. <coughs> just think about it. I get happy. <laughs> All right. So everybody see that now. So when you, when you read the scriptures, you've got to keep that in mind if you're going to rightly divide the word of truth. Study the show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but what? Rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, we've just divided that, didn't we? That scripture. And there's many other things we can say about that. Okay, you got that point. Many scriptures are like that, so you got that. All right, now, what I want to show you is Adam. We go, we go back from, from uh, uh, the cross all the way back. Adam. Where did all these people come from? That's on the earth today. There's seven billion people on the earth. Where, somebody tell me where they come from. Adam and Eve. Huh? Adam and Eve. There's a man that knows the word of God. Adam and Eve. All right, so it began to flood. Now, here comes the flood. That was in B.C., 2350 B.C., now, a lot of people don't understand. That was about 1,500 years, I think it is, from there, isn't it? Something like that. Uh, from that point to that point. A lot of things happened during that period of time. I mean, if I'm saying, if I'm correctly, I'm, I, I think it's been, it was 2,000 or 1,500 or something like that. Let's say 1,500. From here to there is 4,000. Okay. A lot of people don't know why God had to destroy the human race. 
Yeah, they were wicked. You know why they were wicked? Yeah, Adam, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We inherited Adam's sinful nature. Man did. But something happened during that period of time that not many people know. They call, these, these are what you call, these angels are what you call watchmen. They were supposed to watch over man. Well, they were watching, but they were watching the girls. And they came down and they left their first estate. And Jude brings us out. In the book of Jude, you can read that also. Now, they're kept down in the underworld in a place that, that they're, they're kept right now. These angels that came down looking upon the women and begin to have take some as uh, brides and begin to have intercourse. And you had, <coughs> you had a new species, half angel and half man during that period of time. How many knew that? One, well, look at the people that knew that. Did you know that? It's good. Now, some of you didn't know it. Now you know it. So angels, there is no salvation for angels. So he had, to, he, had, he had eight people that was really human beings that came from Adam. And God made a way and told Noah to build a boat. And we know what happened there. And eight people, when they landed, uh, when the water went down, the ship hit the ground. Some say it's right there in Turkey. They started all over again and multiplied. And now we have seven billion people. And it's, getting, it's rising fast, real fast. Okay, so as you move along, you, you study this. Now I'm going to move, start moving fast. And then you have, how many remembers uh, uh, Bebel, Be Bebel, Baal? This happened, remember that? Uh, after the flood, instead of man really beginning to follow God's uh, plan and everything, they're going to build this big high place and try to reach heaven and all this kind of stuff and I say things, and you don't have to believe it, but put it on your shelf. I've studied this thing now for over 50-some years, okay? Not that I know everything, I do not. We only know in part, and we only prophesy in part. What about all these other planets? Are there any life on it? That's the part I don't know. That's the part we don't know. Do you hear what I just said? We don't know that. But possible? There can be life. I mean, God's a big God. Well, I don't believe. Well, it's okay. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, forfeit your salvation. I'm just saying that it's a big universe out there. <clears throat> and I personally believe that we've just got started down here. And I think God's got a lot of plans for us, not only on this globe, but probably on some other planets. Why, well, Mike might even be the, 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 the top man on Mars one day. Of course, we'll be in our glorified bodies, so we'll just shoot up here and see how Mike's doing. <laughs> now, I don't want to get too far. You think I'm getting out in the dark woods now. Okay, just forget that I said that. But, you know, are you been thinking about any of that? I mean, you know, no big deal. Now, I know this, and we got a, a deceptive angel called Satan. And he can transform himself into an angel of light. But let's get off all of that. Anyway, let's move on real quick. Like. So anyway, you know why the flood had to come, and all of those people had to be destroyed in the flood. And then we know Noah and his, his wife and three daughters and it was daughter-in-laws and son, sons repopulated the earth. They, they grew. Here we have, uh, they built the tower. And what did God do? They were all speaking the same language. They were all speaking in tongues. <laughs> Nobody could understand it when God, because he confused all their language and they, 
spread out through the, through the earth, you know. You know, really, if God sometimes don't move us, we ain't going to move. Not many people will move by just wisdom and say, yeah, I better do that, you know. Okay. All right, now we come on down to Abraham. Now, what I want you to see here, God has a plan. God has a plan. God's plan was to have many sons. Many sons. How many of you know that Jesus is our big brother? And we are sons of God right now by faith in Christ. So Abraham comes along. He lives in Ur. And Ur is down there in where the Chardines are, where, the, where uh, Babylon is down there. And so his father, he was, a, he was a Gentile, by the way. He was not a Jew at this point. He was a Gentile. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, I want you to think about it. <clears throat> Abraham, now you're Abraham. All, right, all of us is Abraham. Abraham, <clears throat> I want you to leave your father's house, head out of town. Uh, where are we going, Lord? You just get out of town. I'll direct you. You know, now think for a moment. We want to know where are we going? <laughs> You got to trust God. You just trust God like Abraham did. And you know what? It was counted unto him as what? Righteousness. When you believe God's word. All right. Now, so Abraham, one person right there. The Jewish nation came from Abraham. He's our father, Abraham, too. Because Jesus came from the lineage of Abraham. You see that? All the way down the line to David, right on down, and then the cross. He died on the cross. Okay, so what we have here, Abraham. Now, here's the law was given right here, 1500 B.C. I have. Whether it's right or not, I don't know. Uh, but it's right here where the law was given. You have about 400 years between here and there. So when Paul in the book of Romans was talking, he said, Was Abraham counted righteous after he was circumcised? Or was he counted righteous before he was circumcised? Now, who has the answers to that? All right, let's hear it. Before. All right, everybody hear that? Before. 400 years before circumcision came into being back in the, in those, in, well, in like where, where it came from Moses, but they were, but the, the, he was, he was, they practiced uh, circumcision, but it was, it was not to make them righteous. Do you understand that? Okay. The law was even not given at that point. Here, right here on the mount, right there where the law was given. So 400 years before Abraham was, uh, he wasn't circumcised and there was no law. He didn't have no law. And when there is no law, there is no transgression. <laughs> well, I know you've been studying the Bible, so I don't have to explain everything. I thank God for that. That's true. You go out here on the highway. Uh, Michael tell you, he goes to Germany. There are some expressways that do not have a... Uh, a speed limit, so you could go 80, 90 miles an hour, and he breaks no law. Why? There's no law. Now, you have to adjust that in your mind. We don't have time to adjust everything, because you've all been around a long time, and you understand that anyway. So anyway, so we go from the law, and then, of course, we know all of what happened to the, the Jewish people, and one thing or another, and then, they were in um, basically tribes during that time. They had the 12 tribes of Israel, and each tribe had a, a leader. Uh, there are the 12 tribes of, uh, and the 12 tribes came from, from Moses. 12 tribes came from where? Jacob. Jacob. 
I heard him. What? Jacob. Jacob. Yeah, just refresh your mind. I knew you all knew that. Can you imagine having 12, 12 sons? You study about Jacob's boys, and they were no saints. <laughs> you think your boy is bad. <laughs> Probably an angel compared to them boys. All right. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? If you read your Bible, you know what I'm talking about. All right. Now, so we go, and um, the law was given, and then we see that uh, the tribes... Uh, 400 years of, uh, remember Samson and the different leaders all back in those days that Israel was directed by the judges. Remember that? That was a history of their, and then we came finally, and their first king was what? Saul. Saul was their first king. They didn't want God to be king. No, we want a human king. Well, you'll have to pay taxes. <laughs> you'll have it rough. We want a king. We want a king. All right, here's the king. Saul, you're the king. Well, we know what happened there, don't we? Poor Saul. Then David comes to the, uh, to the front line. 1000 B.C. Now, I want you to see here the lineage way back here in Adam. It was prophesied. In Genesis 3.15. It was prophesied. Put that on the board. <clears throat> and I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He will bruise and, and tread your head underfoot, and you will lie in wait and bruise his head. Now, you got to break that down. What are you talking about, God? God says he will put in between you and the woman. Between who, who is you? Somebody tell me who you is. Satan. All right. Remember, you've got to find out who you is, who he is, who they is, whom whom is. So I will put in between Satan and the woman. And between your offspring, that is the devil's offspring, and her offspring. And who is her offspring? Somebody tell me. Jesus. Everybody got it? Jesus. See? That's it. And he will bruise. He. Who's he? Jesus. Remember capital H. He will bruise and tread your head. In other words, Satan's head underfoot. And you will lie in wait and bruise his heel. So when Jesus went down on his head, <coughs> he bruised his heel. But it messed up Satan's head mighty bad. I know you that. Okay, that's why he's defeated. All right. So you get a, you get a, you get a, whiff, a whiff of that all the way back there. Now, has that come to pass? Has that come to pass? When did Jesus bruise the head of Satan? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And that's where Satan was bruised mighty bad. Okay? At the cross. And who died at the cross besides Jesus? Raise your hand. Let's see your hand. I preached on that Sunday. We died with Christ. When he was buried, who was buried with him? We were. When he was resurrected, who was resurrected? We were. We live in the resurrected life of Christ. Buried with Christ, risen with Christ, to walk in the newness of life. That newness of life is a resurrected life. Romans chapter 8, verse 2. For the, for the law of the spirit of life has set us free from the law of of sin and death. That's what the Bible says. All right, so we know that um, everything that Adam did was crossed out at the cross. Adam, we have no obligation to obey Adam, the first Adam. 
Who was the last Adam? Jesus. Jesus. The last Adam canceled out the first Adam. So now we are new recreated creatures. Well, Bob, I looked in the mirror uh, today and I look just like I did before I was saved uh, three weeks ago. Yeah, your body's not redeemed yet. It's still subject to the curse that's on this law. I wish we had time we could go in and I could show you where even nature is groaning and waiting for the sons of God to be manifest. Anybody, does that ring any bells with you? Put that on the board, Charles. That's in Romans. Well, we're really not getting very far tonight, but we'll do it the best we can. But you need, you need a review of some of this. <coughs> Excuse me. Romans. Find Romans, Charles. All right, Romans, Romans, Romans. How did the thing Oops. Excuse me. All right. Ah, I'm going to find it. All right, here we go. Romans, 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 Romans. Romans 8. Let's start with verse... 19. Romans 8, 19. Now, look, look, Paul is talking here now. For even the whole creation. Now, what is all the creation? The earth, the trees, the animals. All nature waits expectantly and longs earnestly for God's sons to be known. Uh, who is God's sons? Raise your hand. If you're born again, raise your hand. All right, if you're born again, even if you're a woman, you're... Okay. Now, I want you to think about that for a moment. Why are they waiting? Waiting expectantly and longs earnestly for God's sons to be made known, waits for the revealing, this, this disclosing of their sonship. All creation, all nature. Have you noticed the tornadoes here lately? The earthquakes, the floods, the groaning, groaning. We want the sons of God. Why? Because the curse will be lifted. All right, go to the next verse. For the cre creation nature was subject to frailty, to frailty and condemned to frustration. And let's make sure we understand. For the creation or all nature, the animals, you know, and notice animals eating animals. See, when, when, the, when the curse is lifted, and this will be back in our, when the, oop. <laughs> I haven't been drinking. <laughs> well, I have, I have to say, I've been drinking a little uh, heavenly wine, but other than that, I better move this thing back here. Uh, we're gathered here today to pay our last <laughs> he, he went down preaching <laughs> all right, where am I at <laughs> okay all right here we go all right I'm on the board for the creation the nature itself was subject to frailty frutility condemned to fluceration not because of some intentional fault on its part Nature had nothing to do with it. It all happened because of Adam. See, Adam was the top man. And when he failed, everything else went down. He was basically the representative of God on the earth. Adam. And when he failed, nature failed. It wasn't nature's fault. All right, let's finish that up. Not because of some intentional fault on its part, that is nature's part, but by the will of him who so subjected it, yet with the hope. So, but by the will of him, and I would say by the will of him would be, even though it's a capital H, it could be Jesus, it probably is, but who 
so subjected it, yet with the hope. The hope of what? Well, the hope of the sons of God being manifested and the curse will be lifted and you won't see uh, on the news anymore where this lion has eaten this deer because they'll be sitting down together and talking about old times when they used to eat each other. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next verse. That nature creation, uh, creation itself will be set free. When? When? Somebody tell me when. When the sons of God are manifested, that we come into our sonship. Are oh, you see that? All right. <sighs> we'll be set free from its bondage to decay, corruption, and gain an entrance into the glorious freedom of God's children. We will be set free from decay. Have you noticed your body sort of, uh, you know, in the morning it's a little harder every day to get up? Huh? <laughs> you don't quite have that energy to run 25 miles a, 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 a day you, like you used to. I, I remember uh, our sister used to run up and down the road. Uh, <laughs> you remember those days? <laughs> I'm not going to point you out. You remember? <laughs> Oh, I, say, I look out there and I say, bless her heart. How long will this last? You know, I know. I used to do, <laughs> get up, you know. I'm just, hey, I'm like all nature. I'm just waiting, <laughs> waiting on the, my manifestation of, of my glorified body. All right. So, every, how many knew that? Some of you, that's new knowledge, isn't it? You, you got new knowledge tonight. Now, hang on to that. All right, go to the next verse. You know that the whole creation of irrational creatures has been mourning together in the pains of labor until now. Earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, storms, mountains blowing up. We'll have that in the kingdom over here. When the king is ruling over here, we'll have that. And we'll be there with him, reigning and ruling in our glorified bodies. Amen. And you won't need your car. Amen. Won't be no uh, gas station for us. We'll be so full of the Holy Ghost, we can fly, walk, and never lose our breath. When you look in the mirror, a thousand years from now, you'll look the same. No, no wrinkles, no bald heads. <laughs> I got a little pimple in my nose right there. My girls, they love, they you know what they want to do? Dad, let me get it. No, no. I said, honey, you'll just have to wait. In the meantime, I'm groaning like nature for my glorified body and I'll have a new nose. But now you'll just have to put up with the little bump there. So leave it alone. It's my bump. Leave it alone. <laughs> How many have children like that? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, let me, uh, yeah. All right, where are we at? 20 more minutes. Next verse. That might be the last one. Let's see. <sighs> Okay, yeah, okay, this is getting better. And not only creation, but we ourselves. Who are we? Sons. We. You. Us. We. Well, if I'm, I'm going to do that, but now after this, you, some of this groaning, you've been, remember you've been groaning? How many's ever groaned in here besides me? Oh, Jesus. Take this problem from me. Huh? Anybody? I'm not making fun. That's groaning. I've, been, I've done my share of groaning. Look what it says. And not only the creation, but we ourselves too, who have and enjoy the first fruits of the Holy Spirit, a foretaste of this blissful 
things to come grown inwardly as we wait for the redemption of our bodies. Not our spirits, but our bodies. We're waiting. And what happens when our bodies are redeemed? The sons of God will be manifested and all nature will not groan and moan anymore. But until then, they'll be groaning and moaning along with us. I know most of you guys are young. You've never done any moaning and groaning. <laughs> Except uh, uh, Miss James and me and Mike. How many is over 50 in here? You're a big, you're a big groan. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody under 50 don't know nothing about it. Okay. <laughs> Notice what it says. <clears throat> Grown inwardly. And, and, and I want to say this. There's times we're satisfied. There's times we're not satisfied. And you wonder, what's wrong with me? I feel like I'm groaning inside. I, I want something and I don't know what it is. Let me tell you what it is. You want your glorified body. You're sick and tired of the curse that's, that was put upon these bodies of ours by Adam and Eve. You're sick and tired of that curse. Yeah, we've been redeemed from the curse. But these bodies, have you noticed, are still growing older? And I don't care how much lipstick we put on. <laughs> you dress up in your best suit. And you look in the mirror and it still cracks. <laughs> All right, look now. Grown inwardly as we wait. See, some of you are not waiting for that. You're not waiting. Yet. You're just satisfied. Well, after a while, you, you, you. Isn't that right? Huh? We're ready, aren't we? We're ready right now. Oh, boy. See, some of you still want to hang around to eat fried chicken. <laughs> Missy just wants to hang around to eat fried chicken. Missy, we're going to have the best fried chicken you ever taste in your life up there. I believe that. Someone says, well, I ain't going if they ain't going to have fried chicken. Well, you can stay if you want to and take the stamp of the Antichrist. <laughs> I think I'll go. <laughs> All right, look. Grown inward as we wait for the redemption of our bodies. Yes. There's a lot in the scriptures that talks about our bodies. I can turn to scriptures. I know them in my mind. From sensuality and the grave which will reveal our adoption, which will reveal our adoption, our manifestation as God's sons. Say, we have our plan and God has his plan. And his plan is that he'll have many sons. All right. I think that's the end of that. And you've, seen, you've learned something there. I think that's the end of that. All right, we'll stop on that right there. All right, did you learn anything? You learned something there. All right, so now when we look at this, we've got about just a few more minutes. Where are we at on this timetable? Not the top one, because that's what the, that's what the disciples and all knew about this. See, God did not tell the disciples when he was on the earth about everything. When you read over in uh, Galatians about Paul, Paul received certain mysteries, revelations. For example, the revelation of the catching up of the saints. That was not in the Old Testament now, there's certain spots in there that you could spot a few things and pretty well say, yeah, I think that is talking about it. And I can show you some scriptures on that. In, in Luke 21, I can, uh, 32 and 34, I think it is, that I can show you. Something about, it uh, looks like the rapture. But overall, the church in general did not know about the resurrection or what we call today the rapture, which is not a word in the New Testament, but that's an English word that describes the catching up, the snatching away of the saints, okay? The second coming is not the snatching away. 
The second coming is Christ coming on the earth and landing on Mount Olive, and it splits. But when he comes for the church, his bride, he won't land on earth. We'll go up to beat him in the air. Well, how can we do that? Well, we'll have our glorified bodies. And away we'll go. In the twinkling of an eye. Bip. The only thing is those that have died prior to us will rise first. But I tell you, I'll be moving fast behind them. Because, <laughs> I mean, just boom, we're going to go too. Okay. All right, so. They didn't know everything. And you read the scriptures, you'll see that. Okay. So when Paul comes along in the church age, about roughly, I'm saying about uh, 60 or 65, the year um, after Christ, A.D. A.D. after Christ, is that right? About 65, A.D. 65, he gets the revelation. Remember, he's caught up in heaven, you know, whether in the body or out of the body, he didn't know, but he was caught up, and, and, and many things were shared with him. And he got the revelation of the catching away of the saints. They didn't know that in the Old Testament, even though you have shadows and types of the rapture. You understand that? What, what, give me, somebody give me a type of the rapture in the Old Testament. Elijah. All right, Elijah. And Enoch, I love that. The Lord and Enoch's walking along. You know, we're closer to my house, God says, than uh, your house. Why don't you just come on home with me? He said, that's a good idea. What you got for supper? Come on, let's go. Amen. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, yep, go on. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Nothing. No. Can you imagine? I just got to stop here. Here's an egg. A hen lays an egg. Now the rooster's done his job, okay, but the egg is laid. <laughs> How does the things in that egg, I mean, why don't the eye be on the back of the head of the chicken? Uh, the heart be in the knee. The nose on the little toe. How is all that stuff organized and it comes out a little bitty? Tweet, 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 tweet. That's a wonder, isn't it? That's powerful. Here you were, just a seed. Your dad did his job. The seed, the egg, and you pop out. Can you imagine? You got one arm where the leg is supposed to be and the leg is where the arm is supposed to be. And the top of your head is on the bottom of your foot. One eye is on the back and the other eye is on the front. Now, I'm just thinking about it. I mean, I tell you what we'll do. You take all these uh, bicycle parts and we'll throw them all in the air. And I'll guarantee you they won't come down like a bicycle. <laughs> is that not true? I mean... No wonder the Bible says, a fool has said in his heart, there is no God. No, it was put together, designed by human intelligence, the bike was, which came from God. And we were all designed just like that. And we have come out, look how pretty I look, good looking. I mean, some of you just would like to have good looks like me, wouldn't you? When you get my age, you don't worry too much about looks. I tell you, what you got for dinner? <laughs> All right. But I just want to, just want to, we need to, is this, any of this too hard for God? You read in Jeremiah, when Daniel got this vision here, when God got this, uh, well, well, we know that, uh, that, uh, Nebuchadnezzar got this vision and Daniel interpreted it. That was in Daniel 2. But in Daniel 7, Daniel gets a vision about the, the, uh, 
different um, animals, you remember? All the different animals, the bear, the lion, and all of that. Well, which is the same thing. You have them right up under here. Each part of this is a kingdom right on down here. So, but Daniel gets that vision down there. This, but don't show it. But this is given an illustration to the Jewish people about the, the timeline. And here we see uh, the 70th week. 69 weeks happened right here. 483 day, uh, years, weeks go into days. You understand about sometimes it's weeks, we're talking about years, or you understand all that. So, but there was one week left over, that's this last seven years, that's, that's the tribulation years. But we know that this 1,000 years, this gap between the 69th and the 70th week is the church age. And nobody knew it was going to last for 2,000 years but God. And Paul gets a revelation about the church. It is the body of Christ on the earth. And in Ephesians, he talks about how the body of Christ is to function, how we're all to have proper relationships. Each one has given, been given certain gifts, and we're all to operate as a body and get the gospel out to the world. So all that was a new revelation given to the Apostle Paul. That's why the Apostle Paul is called the Apostle to the Gentiles. It's all in the Scriptures. Everything I'm saying is in the Scriptures, but you're going to have to check it out. And if I'm wrong, just let me know and I'll change. Okay? That's fair enough, isn't it? Okay, let's get back to this now. Got five more minutes. So after the cross... We have the ascension. You know, you don't hear too much about the ascension, about Christ being caught up to heaven, do you? How many's ever heard a, a, a message on that? I'm glad you were awake because I preached it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. Christ is in heaven right now, seated at the right hand side of the Father. He is now our high priest, but his spirit lives in us. The Spirit of Christ lives within us. We must understand that in every one of us. And we are brothers and sisters in God's family. And we're to treat each other with respect and love each other because here's what you'll find out. If we don't love each other, ooh, we don't love God. Hello? I know there's many difficulties in relationships. I mean, I'm 82 years old. I've been around a little, quite a while, and I've dealt with many people in divorce situations. But it, it is no problem living with one another. If you let the self-life die, But as long as our self-life is going to dominate and we're going to be the king or the queen of the family, and what I say goes, and if you don't bend to my wishes, this relationship is cut off. It's an old, old story. Read all about it in the Bible. How come Susan and me have been married 61 years? I learned two, two words. Yes, dear. <laughs> and everything was fine. And she learned two words. Whatever. <laughs> And with yes, dear, and whatever, we have had a great time together. <laughs> All right. The old nature is, what's the problem? We know what the problem with the world is. The old nature is trying to live and do and function without God. And without God's principles, it won't work. We see it in families. We see it in, in nations. But 
and cultures. We see it everywhere. But one day it'll all be cleared up and we'll be in the kingdom of God. Now, I got about, yeah, amen. I got four minutes and, and, and I want to say this. Let's get to the day that we live in. Now, we know that uh, in uh, Nebuchadnezzar's time, God allowed Nebuchadnezzar to come in and capture the Jewish people and take them off to Babylon because of their sins and worshiping idols and all that. God had to punish his own people. But Jeremiah was two, I think it was 200 years before that happened, Jeremiah had prophesied that. And it happened just like Jeremiah prophesied it because God told him. Yes. So you go back in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28, Moses, before he left, he outlined, he says, Obey God and you'll prosper. Go your own way and you'll bring a curse on your life. Here's the curses, here's the blessings. The blessings are found in obedience and the curses are found in disobedience to my word. Very simple, not complicated. So it pays to obey. It's a song we used to sing. What was it? Trust and obey. For there is no other way. Trust and obey. For there is no other way. I'd rather have the peace of God in my life Whatever, whatever, you can have it all. I would rather have Jesus because he's coming back and it's good, good pleasure to give me the kingdom. See, once that old man dies of that and you can relax in him, we're not going to miss anything as we're obedient to Jesus. Simple, not complicated. Look at anybody's life out there. I've, I've counseled hundreds of them in my, my days. Every one of them, the same old thing. Same old thing. So sad. But aren't you glad you've learned? Yes, yes. To love even your husband and your wife? Because yes. you know, let me tell you something, girls. If your husband does not obey and treat you right, God is going to be on his little red wagon. Did you hear what I said? His prayers will not get really answered. Just think if I didn't treat Susan right. My prayer, I pray, oh Lord, I pray for Mrs. James. God says, you might as well keep your breath, Bob. But what do you mean, Lord? Well, you're not treating Susan right. So I'm not going to answer your prayers. Boy, that's going to straighten me up real quick, like. You can be sure I treat her right. I can't wait to get her home and squeeze her. I can't wait till she fix that cup of coffee in the morning for me. <laughs> Cooks a ham and eggs for me in the morning. We have our Bible study, and we sit there, and the next thing you know, it's 12 o'clock already? <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> I hope you learned something. There's so much in all of this. I could preach right on to right on, but time's run out. I hope you learned a little something, and we'll go and pick it up next Wednesday night. God bless you, and I love you. If you need prayer, come up, and we'll be glad to pray for you.